Hey guys, SFP here and welcome to episode number 19 of my FIFA 16 Barcelona career mode. And for those of you guys who only watch this uh, career mode, I've made a couple changes. I'm trying something new and I'm trying to get more games in one video. So for this one and for the next two coming up this weekend, I'm actually having two games per video. And I'm hoping that this uh, will benefit me personally and you guys as well that way you guys only get one video and I only uh, I don't basically flood your uh, subscription feed or whatever and here we have the table and this is a special game because uh, this episode actually I'm facing the top two teams or top three teams excuse me because I'm number one I'm facing Real Sociedad today or right now and then I will be facing Valencia in the next game so this is actually a pretty interesting turn of events the schedule actually worked out perfectly for me and while I show you guys here the starting 11 and all that nonsense, uh, I'm very excited at the moment because I just read a couple of articles stating that it is official. The Copa America Centenario will be happening in the U.S. And for those of you guys who don't know, I am uh, a U.S. citizen, I guess. Or I don't, I don't want to say American because obviously that involves the Americas. Uh, but I actually live near the D.C. area, and so I'm very excited because this tournament, obviously, for those of you guys... Who love soccer and who know the Copa America? That's such a such an impressive tournament. I believe it's only second to maybe the Euro. Uh, obviously, I'm not including uh, the World Cup, but I know it is the oldest tournament. I believe it started in the 1915-1913 around that time period. So it predates the World Cup, which is amazing. Or actually, it might be even even further than that. But anyways, I will talk about that later. Let's focus on the game here. And as we have for us, we'll see that we're trying to cement our place here in the top of La Liga or Liga BV. I don't even know what this league is called anymore. I still call it La Liga, and I think that's still the politically correct term. And as we see here, um, uh, the Russell see that uh, players are trying to form an attack. And that is a short half, mainly because nothing happened, unfortunately. And, uh, to my benefit, I guess it might be a good thing that it nothing happened because that makes the job of editing a lot more easier not more smoother and it gets me to my goal of trying to get this under 15 minutes uh, for those of you guys who are watching um, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get these two games in somewhere between a time frame of 10 to 15 minutes however as you can see right now I wasn't as successful as I wanted to but a couple of seconds here and there uh, don't really bug me and hopefully it doesn't bug you guys either and here we have Sergio Canales the ex Real Madrid star, ex Valencia star, I believe, as well. Or uh, Racing Santander, I believe, is where he came from. And what a great cross. And what a great goal there from Real Sociedad. And it's not looking good, guys. To be honest, it's not looking good because, like I said, we have yet to lose. Uh, we've obviously got our streak of uh, not conceding a goal broken. But we still are undefeated. And what a great ball there that Sergio Canales just gave. There and I don't know what my center back was doing there, and I believe it was Vermeulen who just uh, made actually come in on the second half. But for some reason, he kind of ducked there a bit or did not uh, calculate that well enough. And Bruma gets the first goal here for Real Sociedad. And here we see a nice pass for Rakitic. Rakitic has it. He's going for the shot, and what a great shot, but just a little bit off frame. And that's just going to keep me wanting more, guys. We were so close to get the equalizer here. And I could have sworn that ever so slightly the goalkeeper got a touch. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. And we are going to put the ball back in play here uh, with the goalkeeper. And here we have Turan, who is a sub as well. He actually gets clipped from behind. And we're going to get a penalty kick. And even though it's in my favor, I'm not sure I agree with that kick. Excuse me, not that, that decision. But as we see here in the replay... I actually do get a knock there, and it kind of it kind of gets Turan in an awkward position. He kind of loses his balance, and I guess that's a foul. I'll, I'll take it. I guess after the replay, uh, I'm more uh, more in tune with the ref on that decision. And here we have Messi with the equalizer here by a penalty kick, and I believe this is his seventh goal of the season. And I believe he's been my top goal scorer, uh, goal scorer excuse me, so far. So. Um, no surprise there, because obviously Messi is always going to be on the top of the leaderboards there, at least for our team. And it's a good thing I didn't go for the Palenka, otherwise that would have made me look like a complete idiot. 
I might do the plank at some point though. The temptation is is too strong there. And let me uh, for those of you guys who've tried the Palenka PK, let me know. Have you been mostly successful with them, or does the goalkeeper tend to notice you going for that trick? Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. And that is how this for, this first game will end. It is a one-one draw. Not exactly what I wanted. I actually wanted to give the Rasmus see that their first loss, especially since we're at home. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. Maybe we'll get another chance at some point. But something tells me they will concede a, a loss before we actually get the rematch. And actually here, someone in the comment section had mentioned that I should train better players. And so I figured why not a compromise. I'll pick three players that actually have a pretty good potential. And then the other two will be used for my lower ranked players. So I'm hoping that compromise is good enough for you guys. And I'm sorry, I don't remember who posted in the comment section. But you know who you are. So shout out to you there, buddy. Anyways, now we have the next game against Valencia. And again, this, Valencia has not lost either, so this is very interesting. Obviously, I lost the opportunity to give Real Sociedad their first loss. Maybe in the Mestalla, maybe I can just get Valencia their, their first loss. I and mean, it will probably be a darn shame for the fans here as we have the sultry voices of Fernando Palomo and El Matador Kempes. And now we see they're in the board. Real Sociedad still hasn't lost. They have a lot of draws, though. And here we have uh, who would be our rival i guess in the sense that uh, they're trying to get the first spot as well and that would be valencia anyways guys like i was saying in my other uh in the other game previous to that uh the Copa america is actually happening here in the u.s next year between uh june 3rd and june 26th and that's going to be amazing because that's going to have all the 10 teams from south america and also six teams from the Concacaf region obviously the u.s and mexico are automatically qualified i believe costa rica won the Copa Centroamericana and they're in that way and Jamaica won the Caribbean Cup so they're classified they classified for the Copa America that way now there's still two more open slots and I believe it is a playoff match one will be Panama and Cuba and the other one will be Trinidad and Tobago and Haiti now for those of you guys who uh, don't watch CONCACAF too much and I'm assuming that's most of you considering or you're watching this Barcelona career mode uh, CONCACAF is a complicated and tricky region and I, what I mean by that is that while on paper it may seem easy um, class, class of, uh, qualifying for the World Cup uh, in the CONCACAF region has certain difficulties as I would assume any other confederation would have obviously the pitches in these quote unquote lower or less developed quote, and I'm adding quotations because obviously that's up to interpretation these uh, less developed teams, uh, their facilities and uh, the field is obviously not up to par, and so that might cause issues for teams that are not used to playing in low-quality fields. But someone who is used to playing in low-quality fields is probably our goalkeeper here, Claudio Bravo. And obviously, uh, that what I, I mean no disrespect by that, but uh, Chilean or I guess South American, small, the smaller, smaller South American teams probably don't have. Uh, the, the field up to par is like maybe uh, somewhere in Argentina or Brazil but um, obviously the field there is different obviously the type of experiences is not that of Europe and obviously not that of the African Confederation the Asian Confederation they're all different I guess in general every team has their certain difficulties and here we have again another penalty kick and for some reason I'm really good at drawing these penalty kicks right now and it might be just the fact that Neymar is one of those tricky players. And to be honest, he probably dove, guys. He probably dove and made an act of it. But he's in my team, and so I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind in this instance. But if I'm facing Brazil, uh, and I'm I'm probably not going to be the Brazil manager. But if I'm facing Neymar, I'm probably going to be disappointed at that. And we get another penalty kick here. Thanks in part to the god Lionel Messi. And what a, I'm not sure how I can describe that replay because it's just a penalty kick, guys. But we see here that it's his eighth goal of the season. And so far, so good. We just need to hold on to this, and we will get that win. And Valencia will get their first loss. And here we have 
A great opportunity here for Neymar, but he gets brought down, and there is going to be a yellow card here for the Valencia player. And he, the ref, is awarding a yellow card to Antonio Barragan. And there I see that some of the players here are trying to plead the ref to rescind the yellow card. However, I don't think that's going to happen. And as you can see there, that is a well-deserved foul. I'm not sure if it's a yellow card. But I'll take it nonetheless, and by I'll take it, I mean he'll take it, and I'll be happy for it. And here we have Leo Messi with a free kick. Can he make something happen here? And I'm going to go for the shot, guys. I'm going to go ahead of time. And that shot was so close, guys. It actually just hit the edge of the post there on the side. And I was debating how far to the left should I go, and I was dabbling in between here and there, and I went a little too far, and I wish I had that opportunity back. But nevertheless, we have here Neymar who tries to make something happen. He almost loses the ball, and he loses the ball again. And that will be the end of the first half, guys. I believe we have a 2-0, excuse me, a 1-0 victory so far. A partial victory. Now we just have to make sure we hold it in here. I see that Suarez is a little bit fatigued, so I'm actually going to put in someone here on his behalf. And I'm going to put in Munir. And as well, Iniesta is going to come out, and I'm going to put in Turan. And I believe that will be the end of my substitutions for this game. Bearing any injuries, obviously. And that, let's begin with the second half. And here we have a great pass to Munir. Munir is all by himself. He's going to go for the shot. And it goes through. And that is Munir's first goal for the youngster. Well, the kid has a lot of potential. Which is why I'm giving him a lot of training right now. Because I want him to be the very best. The best that ever was. And so on and so forth. And I just quoted a theme song for a popular, uh, I want to say kids show, even though technically when that show came out, I was a kid. Um, but anyways, everyone knows the original theme song is the best and the catchiest. But anyways, and I hope I don't get crapped on <laughs> for doing that or quoting that uh, theme song there. Anyways, and here we have Figuli who goes for it. And what a great save there by Claudio Bravo. And I believe the shot actually was from number 22 of Valencia. Or 20, excuse me. And that is why he's here, guys. That is why. And I've said it so many times before, and I've asked this a couple of times. But let me know, who would you prefer in Barcelona? If you guys are having or playing with Barcelona or doing a career with Barcelona, who do you guys have on the field? Is it um, Claudio Bravo or Ter Stegen? Let me know in the comment section down below. And... Speaking about uh, quality players here, we have the goal, the third goal, and that is scored by none other than Danny Alves, who I wish he would stop changing his jersey number. I'm really annoyed by that. Uh, I think he had number 20 at the beginning, then he went to number 2, and then he went to 22 because of Abidal. And now he's number six. So that makes four jersey numbers in the span of, what, six seasons? That is ridiculous. I don't know how you guys feel about uh, players changing their jersey number. I'm fine with it if it happens maybe once. Because um, I understand. I think Messi actually had three changes. Um, but his changes were at least uh, in a slow progression. And that's how this game will end, guys. We get a 3-0 victory at the Mestalla stadium and I couldn't be happier because that gives us a little bit more space in between uh, us and Valencia and here actually we're going to have an international offer from Paraguay and I'm not going to take it because if you guys remember in the description down below there's only three teams I'm accepting offers so actually two teams which would be the US and Portugal at the moment and Camara or Camara actually grows one level which is very exciting I'm trying to get most of my players to the 70 uh, 70 ish overall range uh, not too much from Munir or Sandro, or even Rafinha, but I'm pretty sure they'll grow at some point. And here we have our Youth Academy players. And for those of you guys who are watching for the first time, I am very, very picky. I want the potentials to be somewhere between 90 to 94. And so those are the players that I'm keeping. Everyone else um, I will release, uh, with the exception maybe of some 91, 92 overall players. Um, I'm just going to keep them in the meantime. I'm hoping they're, they're uh, overall potential will grow and here we get a training injury here for one of our players which is a darn shame I don't like injuries 
Um, but what can we do guys and here since it's the beginning of a new month I will show you guys the squad report and if you guys want to pause the video feel free to get a closer look at the players but so far everyone seems to be growing even my older players the other one who actually has gone down I believe is Adriano who I'm looking to sell guys and uh, I should remind you guys we are getting close to the winter transfer window so if you guys have any suggestions please let me know in the comment section down below I have a few in mind I have Gaia in mind and I have Laporte in mind but let me know if you guys have any of the suggestions uh, feel free to let me know anyways guys I will leave you with that and that will be the end of the video Please follow me on Twitter at SFP Soccer Show. Follow me on Twitch at SFP Gaming. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And also stay tuned for the next episode coming up tomorrow.